بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الانبياء وعلى اله الاسكياء واصحابه الاتقياء اما بعد Today we turn to surah al-kahf and the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents in this surah that we will be discussing today it relates to two individuals some of us sirun commentators of the Quran say these were just two companions two associates of one another while others they say these two individuals were actually brothers Ibn Mubarak rahmatullahi alayhi narrates a narration in which he states that there was a father a man who passed away and he left behind a large inheritance for his two sons one of the sons he took his portion and he decided to spend it on the fuqara to give it in sadaqah and the other brother took his inheritance and he decided to invest it in agriculture and land and property naturally the one who invested his money in property his wealth grew and as his wealth grew unfortunately so did his arrogance and he became so arrogant and full of himself that one day he was speaking to his brother and he said to him look how much your life sucks and look how awesome my life is and then he said to his brother look how much god has given me and then he said to his brother actually he didn't say look how much god has given me he said look how much i have this is an important thing he said look how much i have and then he said that there is nothing that can ever take away this wealth from me my car my house my job my clothes my car they're not going anywhere and i don't even believe the day of judgment is going to come وما اظن الساعه قائمه ولا ان رددت الى ربي لا اجد ان خيرا منها منقلبا First of all, the Day of Judgment won't happen because I have everything in the world and somehow that meant the Day of Judgment wouldn't occur. And even if it does occur, when I stand in front of God, when I stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِّنْهَا مِنْ قَلَبَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me so much more. And his logic behind receiving so much more was that obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me, that's why He gave me so much wealth in the world, and He clearly doesn't love you, that's why He gave you no wealth in the world. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored me in this world and given me so much wealth, then very clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me much more in the hereafter. These verses in this story, they start in Surah Kahf, verse number 32. And they continue all the way until verse number 42. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا that present to them the example of two people, two men. We gave to one of them two gardens of grapes. And we bordered them, we surrounded them with palm trees. And between the fields, we placed crops. These two gardens of his would constantly produce and they would never cut down. He would never lose out, like he never had a decrease in growth. وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا And on top of that, we allowed rivers to flow in between them. وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرًا And he had crops on his, on, on his trees. فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ He was speaking to his companion and he said to him, أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I have more wealth than you and I have a more bigger of a following. أَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I have more people around me. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِ He entered into his garden one day and he was very full of himself. He was oppressing himself. Why does the Quran say he was oppressing himself? Because even though Allah gave him so much, his oppression was that he forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was his oppression. His kibr, his pride, his inad, his arrogance. This was his, pro- this was his oppression. He said, Ma avunnu an tabida hadihi abada. I do not believe that these gardens of mine and my wealth will ever, will ever perish. Wa ma avunnu sa'ata qa'ima. And neither do I believe the day of, judge- of day of judgment will ever come. And if I do turn back to my Lord, I will find with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even better. Allah will give me even more. Now his companion speaks back to him. His brother speaks back to him. His companion speaks back and while they're in the middle of a conversation, he says to him, that have you decided to forget about your Allah? Are you rejecting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you from soil 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from a nutfa, like a drop of semen. And then He made you into a complete man. I'll tell you this much, my Allah is that Allah. My Lord is that Allah. وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِرَبِّ أَحَدًا And I, I will never make partners with Allah. Now keep in mind, the first brother, he made himself a partner with Allah. Where he became arrogant. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes arrogance so much. Because that's where a person starts believing that I'm greater than Allah. I don't need Allah. I'm, I'm independent of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he gives his brother advice. He says to him, وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ MashaAllah. When you entered into your garden, what you should have said was, MashaAllah. La quwwata illa billah. That's what you should have said. There are narrations from the Prophet in which Rasulullah said, Imam ibn Kathir and other mufassirun under this verse, they quote the narration that Rasulullah said to the companions that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with something, that you are happy with something that you really like, any sort of blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say MashaAllah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve that blessing for you. The riwayah actually says the only thing that will take away that blessing from you is death. So learn to say MashaAllah. Every blessing you have, you put on a nice garment, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you look handsome and beautiful, say MashaAllah. When you're at home and you're opening up your makeup box for the sisters and you look at all the products you have, say MashaAllah. Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are orphans in the world, their makeup is a soil of the ground. That's all they can put on their face. And today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much. When you sit to eat iftar and there's food in front of you, be thankful to Allah. Say mashaAllah. Make a habit, make that a dhikr. Something that's constantly on your tongue that you keep saying mashaAllah. Look, let me tell you one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only allow those servants to be in the inner circle of His friends who have the characteristic of tawadu, who are humble. Because those that have arrogance are not allowed in the circle of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ Allah does not like those who are arrogant. You have to be humble. You can only be humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you are thankful to Allah. And you can only be thankful to Allah if you acknowledge your ijz, your inability to do anything without His help. Once you acknowledge that I am ajiz, I cannot do anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time you accomplish something in life, you will do shukr of Allah. And when you have shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you then become a mutawadi', a humble person, and therefore the doors of Allah's mercy are open for you. Look at Surah Al-Dahab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are also known as Surah Al-Insan. In the opening verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the human being of his inability, his ijz. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلِ So Allah talks about his, the inability of the human being in the opening verses of Surah Al-Insan. And then He talks about His favor on the human being. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Because when a person acknowledges his inability, his ijz, then when he sees Allah's favor, he should do shukr. And those who, do, those who are ungrateful, in the next verse, Allah, Allah says, إِنَّا أَعْتَذْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ سَلَاسِلًا وَأَغْلَالًا وَسَعِيرًا For the ungrateful, there's a punishment. However, those that are thankful, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ يَشْرَبُونَ مِنْ كَأْسٍ كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا كَافُرًا The whole formula is laid out right at the beginning of Surah Al-Dahr. Right at the beginning of Surah Al-Insan. So whenever you have a blessing of Allah, you have a, you have a beautiful spouse, you have healthy children, constantly keep saying, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You're able to read the Qur'an, say MashaAllah. وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ MashaAllah. But that's not it. What else did he tell him to say? La quwwata illa billah. Say MashaAllah and also say, La quwwata illa billah. Imam Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi under the tafsir of this ayah, he also quotes another narration from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as narrated by Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi in his musnad. That this statement, La quwwata illa billah is from, from the treasures of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La quwwata illa billah, what does it mean? There is no strength, there is no ability, there is no power other than with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Masha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. And then he says to his brother, In tarani ana aqalla min kamalan wa walada. Don't you see I have less wealth than you? Don't you see I have less of a family than, uh, than you do? Clearly you have much more than I do. But I'm saying, Masha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. Even though I have little, you have so much. You should be saying this much more. You should constantly be thinking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says to his brother, he gives him the warning, فَعَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يُؤْتِيَنِ خَيْرًا مِّن جَنَّتِكَ It's possible in the hereafter that Allah will give me gardens better than your gardens. وَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْهَا حُسْبَانًا مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ أَيْ عَذَابًا مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ And Allah will send a punishment on your gardens from the heavens, from the skies. فَتُسْبِحَ سَعِيدًا زَلَقَ And it will become a smooth, dusty ground. سَعِيدًا Empty, clear. There, there will be no sign of any of your gardens if Allah's punishment comes. أَوْ يُسْبِحَ مَاؤُهَا غَوْرًا Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make its water sunken. You won't even see the water. You know the, the rivers that are flowing in your garden? They'll all be gone. فَلَن تَسْتَطِيعَ لَهُ طَلَبًا You won't even be able to find traces of the water that's in your garden. وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَأُحِيطَ بِثَمَرِهِ Allah Azza wa Jal says, We encompassed his gardens with a punishment. فَأَصْبَحَ He came to the garden the next morning. يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ He began to turn his hands upside down out of concern and worry. He was so, you know, lost and shocked. عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا Because of all of the investments he put into that garden. وَيَقُولُ وَهِيَ خَابِيَةٌ While it was empty. Now there was nothing there at all. The punishment of Allah come. He then, عَلَى عُرُوشِيَا خَابِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِيَا It was empty. وَيَقُولُ And he began to say, يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي this was my mistake. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last few verses, verse number 43 and 44, He says, And there was no, there was for him no company to aid him other than Allah. Nor could he defend himself. Therefore we learn that pure and absolute authority lies for Allah, the truth. With him lies the best reward in outcome. With these verses, we learn that there was one person that was thankful for his blessings. He had little, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him so much more in the hereafter. The other person became arrogant. He forgot where these blessings came from. He began to reject Allah. He neglected the rights of the fuqara. And, he, and, and that arrogance of his led to his wealth being taken, taken away in the world. And in the hereafter, only Allah knows what his outcome will be. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from the thankful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the mutawadi'un, those that are humble. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to acknowledge and realize our ibs and our inability in front of our khaliq and our master. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.